Namaskar. I am grateful to all of you who have joined today to commemorate the 147th birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel on National Unity Day and to pay tribute to him by highlighting his immense contribution towards India's struggle for independence, national integration and unity. I thank the Indian Mission for hosting this talk during the commemoration of the 75th anniversary of India's independence. Sardar Patel's legacy is associated with the unity and integrity of India, his crucial role in integrating the princely states and in furthering national unity in the aftermath of India's independence. His negotiation skills, precision, firmness and administrative efficiency facilitated to achieve this remarkable feat. Equally, he stands out as the first major leader of the independence movement who came from a rural background, whose leadership in the various satyagraha and non-violent civil disobedience movement is remarkable. His inclusive approach was focused with laser-like intensity on the essentials and the goal that had to be achieved. He undertook all the actions with total dedication with no halfway measures. Sardar Patel's characteristic strength, resolve, wisdom, vision, nationalism, and understanding of the need for India to be united as one nation helped him in enabling India to achieve progress in its stature and growth from poverty to prosperity as a robust nation. He achieved this because of his mastery of personal leadership and institutional management. Sardar Patel's negotiation and reconciliation skills, humane approach and kindness coupled with sympathy hold key lessons for guiding and inspiring modern leaders to explore all options to ensure a win-win situation in any challenging condition. Sardar Patel was born on October 31st, 1876 in Nadiad district in Gujarat state in India in a Patidar family who were landowners. Patidars are known for rallying closely against outsiders, respecting their seniors, an individual reverence to the extended family and a sense of equality. He instinctively acquired all these traits. From an early age, Sardar showed the qualities of responsibility, forthrightness and courageousness. He was always attracted to justice, was skillful in debate, aware of his adversary's weak points and an eloquent speaker from his school days. Sardar Patel possessed the qualities of a servant leader with exemplary traits. He was straightforward, said what was on his mind, and his commitment to India's independence was true and strongly defined. He had exceptional qualities of courage of conviction, measuring all the decisions against truth, injustice, and exploitation, coupled with a strong sense of humor, transparency, total fearlessness, and successfully navigating to the right choices. He excelled in the art of persuasion. He kept people's interest at heart, and his organizing skills will always remain an inspiration for every Indian. His clear and accurate conception of his objectives and goal played a significant role in the Indian independence movement and later on as well. He was also known for his composure and determination to uphold law and order throughout the country as the first deputy prime minister and the home minister of sovereign India. He judged people instantly and had the courage to reprimand the erring. He did so judiciously, though treating everyone with the same yardstick and his helping hand reached high and low alike. Sardar Patel was self-taught and had the ambition of becoming a barrister. To attain this goal, he initially became a lawyer by learning by himself and saved money for his ambition. He went to London in August 1910 and finished his course in 30 months to become a barrister. In February 1913, he returned to India and started his practice in the Ahmedabad District Court in Gujarat. He was forthright, skilled and totally dedicated to his profession. He excelled in cross-examination and could unnerve even well-prepared tough witnesses. During the cases that he undertook, he indicated a meticulous understanding of facts, 
an accurate estimate of the opponent's points, a carefully planned defense and attack. Soon, he achieved fame as a revered barrister and was an acknowledged success in his chosen career. What mattered above all was the fearlessness with which he handled the court, something unheard of in 1913-14 before Mahatma Gandhi arrived in India from South Africa. In 1917, Sardar Patel entered the municipal politics of Ahmedabad. Soon after his election to the municipality, he established his authority and proved his mettle and iron will to fight his way to victory. Also, his ability as a leader of steadfast courage, dedicated to public cause, and one who could outmaneuver his opponent by staying firm to facts through a meticulous strategy and planning. Sardar Patel, a public-spirited young man of 42 years, came in direct contact with 48-year-old Mahatma Gandhi for the first time in November 1917 at the Gujarat Political Conference in Godhra. It was here that Mahatma Gandhi had made a statement of great significance. He had said, and I quote, If we are unable to run our village administration skillfully, honestly and justly, how can we justify our demand for the independence of our country? Unquote. Sardar Patel, who was imbued in rural culture, could not agree more. He had proved it by his actions in running the civic administration of Ahmedabad. People of Gujarat observed in him a new national leader in the making, an unrelenting crusader, an able administrator and a skillful mediator. In the year 1917, the nation witnessed Mahatma Gandhi's victories in quick succession in three satyagras, which made a sweeping effect on Sardar Patel's mind that was profound, far-reaching and lifelong. It moved a mind that was resolute, analytical and governed by reason. He saw the beginning of a new agrarian uprising which impressed him the most as he was the son of the soil. This understanding irresistibly drew Sardar Patel towards Mahatma Gandhi, his methods of nonviolent civil disobedience and satyagraha. Thus, Sardar Patel became Mahatma Gandhi's chosen deputy commander and henceforth it was his support in planning and implementation which was the most significant contribution to the various satyagraha in India. He led the Kheda Satyagraha of 1918 in Gujarat, the Flag Satyagraha in Nagpur and the Borsad Satyagraha in Gujarat in 1923 and the Bardoli Satyagraha in 1928 in Gujarat. His substantial contribution to the Sol Satyagraha in 1930 was matchless. Sardar had understood that the authority of even the most oppressive government ultimately comes from the consent of the governed and if the people turn their backs on the authorities, it will be powerless. These satyagras inspired millions of Indians to actively take part in the independent struggle. In the year 1918, some peasants from Kheda district in Gujarat state made an appeal to Sardar Patel about the unreasonable demand by the British government to pay higher and unjust land revenue which distressed and oppressed them. Their demand was for the suspension of the land revenue and getting relief from the hardships the peasants were facing. Kheda Satyagra was the first non-cooperation civil disobedience in which Sardar Patel played a major role under Mahatma Gandhi's guidance. During this Satyagra, Sardar Patel thoroughly dedicated himself and traveled extensively in most of the villages in the Kheda district along with Ravi Shankar Maharaj, Indulal Yagnik, Mahadev Desai and his other associates. He minutely observed the hardships of the peasants, motivated them with moral courage and prepared them not to pay land revenue. He was convinced that Satyagraha was the only answer to the unjust behavior and high-handedness of the British regime, which damaged the self-respect and pride of the virile peasants of the district. Motivating the peasants, Sardar Patel said, and I quote, a state ought to be proud of a people who are strong and determined. There is nothing to be gained from the loyalty of a cowardly and cringing people. The loyalty which you get from a fearless and self-respecting people 
is the loyalty which a government should welcome. It is only if you are prepared to face hardship now and get the government to change its policy that you can remove the source of hardships at all times." Unquote. Sardar Patel also advised the peasants, and I quote, stick to the path that Mahatma has shown you. You should give up violence and any thought of loot or any underhand means. Instead, you should take to the path of dharma, the path of truth and justice. Do not misuse your valor. Remain united. March forward in all humility, but fully awake to the situation you face, demanding your rights with firmness, having no fear of the village officials." Unquote. Kheda Satyagra was outstanding for the united protest and restraint of the peasants. British officials confiscated the belonging of the peasants. Their land and subsistence was impounded. Still, a huge majority of farmers remained firmly unified in the support of Sardar Patel. The Satyagra lasted for approximately six months and the result was that the demand for the land revenue for the current year and the next year were halted and they returned all impounded property. The peasants showed their courage, unity, fearlessness, firmness and were able to draw towards them the attention of the whole of India. Sardar Patel observed and I quote, for hundreds of years, India has suffered from the chronic disease of slavery. No doctor has been so far able to cure it. Those who made efforts up to now merely administered sweet medicine, which failed to be effective. Some people felt that how could one who advised them to fight against the government treat the disease? But never forget that this doctor, Mahatma Gandhi's mind and heart is filled with the burning desire to serve the people. I congratulate Mahatma Ji for having led Kheda to the forefront of the Indian independence." Unquote. Mahatma Gandhi said, speaking about Sardar Patel after the triumph of the Kheda Satyagra in 1918, and I quote, a leader's skill is judged by his competence in selecting his assistants. Many were prepared to follow me, but I could not make up my mind as to who should be my deputy commander. Then I thought of Vallabhai Patel. I must admit that when I first met Vallabhai, I could not help wondering who this haughty person was and whether he could be able to do what I wanted. If it were not for his assistance, this campaign could not have been carried through so successfully. The Kheda Satyagraha brought these two great men of India together. It was the beginning of Sardar Patel's public life and his active involvement in Satyagraha for India's independence. In 1922, Mahatma Gandhi was arrested and charged with sedition for writing essays against the British government. Sardar Patel abruptly found himself alone and took a resolve to take charge of the civil disobedience campaign in the state of Gujarat. Mahatma Gandhi's first article after his release from incarceration and recuperation was about Sardar Patel's leadership. He paid a compliment to Sardar Patel's outstanding organizing and administrative skill and noted that Patel had collected around himself a band of devoted workers of like mind and ability. In 1923, the flag Satyagraha was undertaken through non-violent civil disobedience in Jabalpur and Nagpur towns in the central province that lasted for several months. This Satyagraha focused on establishing the right and liberty to hoist the nationalist flag and challenge the validity of the British rule in India. The government had proclaimed laws banning the hoisting of nationalist flags and restricting civil freedom by issuing prohibitory orders. During the civil disobedience, the leaders and people were persuaded to breach the law and hoist the flag without resisting arrest or retaliating against police brutality. The Satyagraha in Nagpur started on May 1st and continued up to August 18th, 1923. Sardar Patel arrived in Nagpur to lead the Satyagraha. His first act was to plan and strategize to strengthen the Satyagraha. He started by asking the provinces to send volunteers from all sections of the society. He wanted to enroll women into the Satyagraha in the belief that that cannot fail to arouse the country. The Satyagraha continued relentlessly prominent leaders and about 2,000 volunteers were imprisoned and were punished with harsh labor. 
Soon the government realized that Sardar Patel's leadership to carry out the flag satyagraha to a successful end was gathering impetus and it turned into a battle of wits between Sardar Patel and the local officials. The prohibitory order by the government was to end on August 17th and hence they wanted to resolve the issue quickly. Judging this impediment of the government, Sardar Patel announced that from 18th August onwards, the Satyagraha would be intensified by increasing the number of volunteers taking out the procession. And if the government prevented this, the struggle will assume a new phase. It was a clever, skillful turn and put the government in a predicament. Sardar Patel proceeded by announcing both the hour and the plan of the procession. At midday, 100 volunteers set out with the national flag. The procession reached the destination without being stopped by the police. Sardar Patel declared, and I quote, the honor of the national flag stands vindicated. Our right to take out the procession on the public roads in a peaceful and orderly manner had been restored. I regard it as a triumph of truth, nonviolence, and suffering. By the grace of God, I am now in a position to announce that the Nagpur Satyagra campaign successfully closes on this auspicious Gandhi day in a manner entirely in consonance with the spirit of the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. The imprisoned volunteers were set free and took out the victory march through the civil lines with the national flag flying high right in front. Sardar Patel, however, shared the fruits of victory with the government and stated at the public meeting the same evening, and I quote, All honours goes to those who went to jail and suffered all manners of hardships. All honours go to the organising committee of Nagpur, which showed an amazing organising capacity and was tireless in its efforts. They all will always look back with pride upon this struggle which was fought with weapons of purity and fearlessness. It will fill the people with faith in the superiority of the weapons of truth, non-violence and self-sacrifice." Under the leadership of Sardar Patel, the flag Satyagraha prevailed against the might of the British who were a sensitive, prestigious issue, the flag. With the vindication of the national flag's honour, his prestige soared high in the people's hearts and established his hierarchy among the prominent national leaders. Just when Sardar Patel wound up the Nagpur flag Satyagraha, he was requested to lead a Satyagraha in Borsad district in Gujarat in December 1923. It was to protest the punitive tax imposed upon the people of Borsad and Anand district in Gujarat on the charge of harboring decoits. The government was eventually compelled to withdraw the tax within 37 days of no tax campaign in the Satyagraha. It was a victory for Sardar Patel. He had been fully justified. He said, and I quote, once again, there has been a triumph of truth, nonviolence and penance. The victory has been as quick as our struggle was just. It is unique in that both the parties have won. It has admitted its mistake openly and with courage. Our victory lies in the government's withdrawal of charge made against us." Unquote. Mahatma Gandhi congratulated Sardar Patel for the victory in Bursad Satyagraha and wrote, Welcome the King of Bursad. Sardar Patel's most famous intervention occurred between 1925 and 1928, attending to a tax agitation in the drought-afflicted district of Bardoli in Gujarat. His capability as an organizer speaker, relentless campaigner, and an inspirer of ordinary people were previously known, which came to the fore in the Bardoli Satyagraha. In 1926, government had carried out a land survey in the district and passed a new assessment for the land revenue. The overall increase in the land assessment amounted to 30%. Therefore, the villagers had to bear the burden of a twofold increment, one on account of the increased assessment and the other because of the higher assessment of the upper class. Sardar Patel and his associates meticulously examined the matter and were satisfied that the peasants' cause of not paying the enhanced land revenue was just. His leadership blended the foresight of a peasant and his exceptional determination and his forthright diplomacy had the expertise of a master tactician. 
He united villages and towns, brought about monetary and moral support from all over Gujarat for the farmers' agitation. The Satyagraha remained thoroughly non-violent, despite the forced confiscation of land by the British government. The Satyagraha in Bardoli transformed the mood of despondence in the country and it gave the Indians fresh determination. It gave the peasants new confidence. The soldiers of the Satyagraha were about 80,000 villagers of Bardoli district. Their leader was Sardar Patel. He was given the name of Sardar or the chief by a village woman called Meethi Ben during the struggle and the whole nation accepted this title from then on. These Satyagrahas led by Sardar Patel were an admirable lesson in the method of voluntary self-suffering to oppose the brute force of the government and brought people closer to Swaraj as it accomplished people's participation on an unprecedented scale. Sardar Patel was the leader. He was adored by people for his never-ending spirit, great conflict resolution skills, dedication to work, loyalty to the country, always adapting to the group and maintaining balance. In the post-independent India, Sardar Patel emerged as an astute leader and an insightful statesman, acknowledged as the Iron Man and the unifier of modern India. As a nation builder, his unrelenting efforts towards the unity of the country brought success. Sardar Patel's life is an inspiration for everyone and the nation gratefully remembers his tremendous selfless contribution during the celebration of India's 75th anniversary of independence. I once again take this opportunity to thank the Indian Mission for hosting the talk on the occasion of National Unity Day. My special thanks are to all of you who have joined me online. Namaskar. <laughs>